When I first picked up a film camera, I'd shoot all the time. And when I got the shots back in the end, I'd be like, why do they all look like shit? It seemed like no matter what I did, they never really looked as good as the peoples that I looked up to. Until I found out some annoyingly simple steps that take a shot from any old picture to sharp, clean and pop it. So I've put together five simple steps that'll set your pictures apart and give them that professional look. This is how I went from taking pictures like this to making pictures like this. And it's so simple and easy. For about the first year of shooting film, I was taking my film to a high street lab to get it developed. I guess I wasn't really that worried about it at the time. I was just enjoying shooting, but my scans looked like shit and it actually cost a hell of a lot of money. It was only when a friend suggested another lab and I tried it out that I realized just what the difference it makes to go to a really good lab. This difference is mainly down to the quality of their scanners and the fact that they don't make stupid mistakes like thumbprints or hairs on negatives and things like that. A really good lab will have the ability to scan at really high resolutions and that'll mean that your pictures will be much sharper and clearer when you come to post them, print them or put them into a book. Even if you think you've got a good lab now, it's really worth shopping around and trying some different places out just so you know you're definitely at the best spot. This switch was pivotal for me to ensure that I was getting the highest quality scans. And if you don't use a great lab, then you're definitely holding yourself back. But that alone is not gonna bring your shots to a pro standard. Listen up to the next few steps. I don't know about you, but I've gone through periods in my photography where I feel like I'm just shooting because I'm a photographer and I feel like I should be shooting. You know that feeling, sometimes you just go out, you shoot and you think, I don't know if I've really got anything good today and it is how it is. You get your pictures back and you look at them and you're like, these are shit. Pointless landscapes or pictures of kind of nothing on the street or whatever. You're just like, wow, maybe I'm not even a photographer. But for the most part, the problem isn't you and your abilities. It's more about mentality and the intention of shooting. How many times are you just throwing the camera up and taking a photo rather than properly composing a photo or thinking about how can I shoot this more creatively or which is the best angle for this shot? This can be a really bad habit to fall into and it's really hard to get out of. If you're just shooting when you're not fully in the moment or you're in the middle of something else, then chances are you're not getting the best shots you could be getting. Real pros know the importance of shooting with intention. Yes, it's also important to shoot with intuition and in the moment, but often you need to really compose an image and think about an image to get the best out of it. Give yourself more time and space to shoot in the moment and think about it properly. If you see something as you're walking along, maybe don't just throw your camera up and take a quick picture. Maybe spend a few minutes and set it up properly and compose the image properly. If that could be the difference between getting a 7 out of 10 photo and a 9.5 out of 10 photo, are those five minutes worth it? Probably, yeah. These little things, the fine details, are what will set your work apart from the old boring photos that you were taking before to becoming more professional looking and just like how the people you look up to shoot. But it'll take more than just two steps to make your photos silky smooth. A while ago, I was shooting a little project on a Canon AE-1 with a 35 to 70 mil 3.5 lens. And at the time, I didn't really realize why the quality of the shots was so bad. I used a good lab, I was using some good film, but still, the photos were shit. The truth is, bad lenses make for bad photos. And 
usually you'll find that a professional is using a really good lens. If you look at most of your favorite film photographers, then they're probably shooting something like the Leica M6, which has some insane lenses and maybe even a medium format camera, which again, they usually house some of the best lenses made. These lenses are not only incredibly sharp, which obviously adds to the level of detail and the look of their work, but they also usually have some really interesting lens coatings, which will change the look and feel of their images. Now, I'm not gonna suggest that everyone goes out and buys a Leica M6 because boy oh boy do we live in the real world and we can't afford that shit, but you can do your best. And my suggestion would be to buy prime lenses and high quality prime lenses for your particular camera. Obviously, every camera fits different lenses, but you could even buy some of the more recently made lenses. Say if you've got a Nikon FM2N or something like that, then you can actually house the 50mm 1.8 uh, autofocus lens, and it'll be better quality than the original lenses were. Definitely don't just settle for having a 28 to 70 mil lens for your camera because your photos are just not gonna have much quality, much pop, or they're just gonna be bad. Ensuring that you have high quality prime lenses is gonna be one of the massive things that has a big impact on your final image and makes your pictures look more professional and more like the way you want them to look. But there are two more things that I've identified that are absolutely integral to a pro's style. Now I'm gonna save the most important thing to last, but I really wanted to just talk about this real quick. I didn't really wanna talk about particular cameras, but I think this is something that you guys deserve to know. A lot of the best shots taken by your favorite film photographers were probably taken on a medium format camera. Now you might just be thinking medium format just increases the size of the negative and therefore you get a higher quality scan in the end. Now that is true, but there are a lot of other aspects about medium format cameras. For instance, a lot of them have unbelievable lenses, as I was saying before, but also the film has more exposure latitude and generally they have sort of better color and Overall, the quality of the image is better. Now, I only really included this one so that you knew that that was the case, because I don't really wanna be suggesting that everyone goes and has to buy a medium format camera. You can still take incredible shots with 35 mil cameras, and if you follow all the tips that I've put out in this video, then you will be able to create some amazing shots. The point is, there is a bit of a difference when it comes to medium format shots, and I want you guys to be aware so that you're not thinking, I've done all this, why doesn't it look like this? But for me, I think it's much more important to be able to shoot more shots on 35 mil, whereas you will only get like 10 shots on medium format, depending which exact format. So now that I've covered that one, let's go on to the most important thing. This is a step that's eluded me for quite a while. Maybe it's because I'm really stubborn or maybe it's just because I'm lazy. I don't know. But for the longest time, I didn't edit any of my photos. Not until the last few years or so. And in those years, I've started to feel more of a sense of identity through my images. There have been so many shoots that I've done where I've got the pictures back and I thought, they don't really look how I thought they were gonna look. And then two minutes after editing them, I'm like, this is exactly the picture I thought I was making. All of your favorite photographers are editing their film photos to a really high standard. They're giving them identity, life, and style. And if you're not doing it, then you're probably shooting yourself in the foot. Now, of course, some people, it's a personal choice. I'm not here to judge, but for the most part, the raw image that you get from the scans, it's, it's there to be flat. It's there to be edited. If you've not edited any film photos before, then I'd just suggest to get a set of 10 or so different photos in different types of light 
and just start to play around with them and start to try and create a sense of identity. What was it that you wanted to achieve when you took this photo? What sort of feel did you want to get when you took this photo? Can you try to achieve that through the editing? The room is where photos are made. The photo is taken, it's produced, and then you hone it in. You get those tiny little details and you increase a little bit of color in a certain spot and you make it how you wanted it to feel when you took the image. Obviously for professionals, they've started to create an identity and they know how they want it to feel. And for you, it, it might take a little longer to figure out what you're trying to say with your photos and what you're trying to make them look and feel like. Just don't go too crazy on vibrancy and contrast and things like that, unless that's your identity, I suppose. Now, these might seem like really simple tips. I don't know but they're really important tips. For as complicated as we make photography seem, it's really quite simple. And if you overcomplicate it, that's up to you. But I guarantee if you put all of these things into place, then your pictures will look a whole lot more professional. And they'll look more like the photographers that you look up to. But don't stop there. You will need these next steps to continue to get better and progress as a photographer. So watch this next video and keep getting better.